Moments ago at Shea Stadium with the score tied at 10, the Patriots run this sweep. 58, Pete Brock out in front, 23, Horace Ivory with the ball, cuts in then back out. The Patriots on an 11-yard touchdown by Ivory go up 16 to 10 at Shea over the Jets. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to NFL 78. I'm Brian Gumbel. Mike Adamley is in our Highlight Center. We're going to get you caught up on all the action of week number 12, including highlights. But first, let's go live to Shea Stadium. Join Charlie Jones and Len Dawson. Oh, he's winding up, bringing that ball way down around his knee, which is not a good thing to do. But you can see that there's no way that you can throw over these big defensive linemen. I mean, they're they're just they're just they're just too tall. This is Charlie Jones, Lynn Dawson, Shea Stadium, New England leading the Jets, 16 to 10. Jets have the football. Matt Robinson is replacing injured Richard Todd. Pass is complete. Jerome Barkham. Steve Keen was there for the defense. Barkham goes out at about the 42-yard line. So it'll be third down and a yard. Boy, that was a that was a perfect throw because great coverage by 52 Steve King. The ball was right on the money, right next to the sidelines where Barkham could make the catch and stay in bounds. The first first to pass was not a very good one, but this one was excellent. You can see the good good coverage there. Look at that. Great move by Barkham, keeping both feet in bounds. Both tight ends are in, Clark Gaines is in, short yard is third down one. Kevin Law, first down Jets, 44-yard line. Twelve minutes left to go in the ball game. New England leading 16 to 10. And don't forget about that block's extra point. Looming larger and larger. Brings up two factors. One, a touchdown at extra point gives you the lead. Number two, don't overlook two field goals. Well, the Jets have to get something going. That's the first big first down for Matt Robinson. He needed that. Here's the double wing. Both tight end. Play out. Way up top. 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 Just tie it up. Robinson for Wesley Walker. Beating Claiborne and Hayes. 56 yards. And Wesley Walker was captured. I said earlier you can contain this guy for a while, but he has the ability to break the big one. And here he is. Here comes speed. Mike Hayes has got great speed. Wesley Walker has more. Great throw, great catch. The ball game is tied. The extra point coming up. And we said, remember the blocked extra point. Well, here's the applause for our timing. And then if the Jets do make that extra point, they'll take the lead 17-16. We might note that, as you noted, Robinson was in there quarterbacking because Richard Todd re-injured his right shoulder. Okay, two teams with winning streaks on the line are playing in Minnesota. The Chargers have won three in a row, the Vikings four in a row. It's 13-7 in the fourth period. Let's check in with Mike Adamley and get some highlights in this game. Been a good ball game, Mike. Very good. You know, during the offseason, Bryant, there was a very big trade. The Minnesota Vikings trade away all-pro guard Ed White. He has done a super job for San Diego, opening up big holes in the uh, Viking defensive line. But Tarkington was his usual masterful self in the first quarter. Here he hits Ricky Young for touchdown number one to make it 7-0 for the Vikings. But San Diego behind a long, good running attack, and Hank Power here scores to make it 7-7. Dan Fouts trips on this play in the second half but finds John Jefferson. Boy, they taught him well at Arizona State. They missed the extra point. It's 13-7. to That missed extra point will be a factor as this game wears on. Once again, a great job by Ed White, the all-pro offensive uh, guard for the San Diego Chargers, once of the Minnesota Vikings. Okay, Mike. The Cardinals jumped out to a 24-0 lead today, but they've since come back to the pack. They are still out in front of the Redskins, though, 27-17. Theismann has thrown for two scores, and Hart has matched that performance. The Jets did, in fact, kick the extra point, so they are now out in front of the Patriots, 17-16. Thanks to that 56-yard strike to Wesley Walker that we saw. Very quickly now, the Giants in the fourth period out in front of the Eagles by a score of 17-6. Tampa Bay leading Buffalo. This one is in the fourth period, 17-3. Ricky Bell has uh, injured his knee in that ball game. New Orleans-Dallas, it's 14-7 Dallas at the half. Seattle, Kansas City, 10-3 at the half. Seattle, Cleveland leading Baltimore by four, and Atlanta over Chicago. We've still got a second half of football to come, but first... Back at Arrowhead here at the Kansas City, Missouri, we are at halftime. Marv Albert with Paul McGuire on a very cool and crisp day, which I know you would agree. Paul has the uh, 
Put a V-neck sweater on. Oh, with a sweater this week. Yeah. Away from losing your macho warm. image, Paul. This is uh, <laughs> at halftime. Never had it. Seattle leading Kansas City by the score of 10-3, running down the scoring, a 40-yard uh, field goal by Herrera. In the first quarter, Sims with his 11th touchdown of the year, a 10-yard run, gave Seattle a 10-0 lead, and then uh, off that good drive by Mike Livingston, uh, Kansas City able to get on the board on the field goal by Stenerud from 20 yards out. Four seconds left in the half, and that's the way we stand. And Sperry NFL Report, brought to you by Sperry Rand Corporation, whose commitment to the future is making machines do more so man can do more. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our New York studios. I'm Brian Gumbel. Mike Adamley is in our Highlight Center. We're just about halfway done with week number 12. Together, Mike and I will try to get you caught up. San Diego against Minnesota, a pair of clubs with winning streaks, played today in Bloomington. The Chargers had won three straight, the Vikings four straight, but it is the Chargers streak that's still alive tonight. They won at 13-7. Fran Tarkenton had to put the ball in the air 42 times, completed only 27 of them. Meanwhile, the Chargers dominated the ball game at the line of scrimmage, and Mike Adamley was following it from kickoff time. Mike, the West Coast team played pretty well in the snow. It was 15 degrees cold, three inches of snow on the ground, yet San Diego's ground game did the Vikings in this afternoon. The Vikings did get on the board first when the old master, Fran Tarkington, look at those stats, 27 for 42. Hits Ricky Young, leading receiver in the NFL to put the Vikings on front 7 to nothing. Hank Bauer even the score at 7-7 with this one-yard run. And then later on in the third quarter, after the rest of the scoreless first half, Dan Fouts slips, fires to John Jefferson. The extra point was missed. 13-7 final. The Vikings now drop. They drop to 8-4 in the NFC Central Division. They are awaiting the outcome of the Denver-Green Bay game. The story in D.C. Stadium where the Washington Redskins were entertaining the St. Louis Cardinals. The Redskins needed to win to stay atop on the NFC's Eastern Division, but they ran into the hot Cardinals. And a sub, a super sub, kind of did it for him. A cast off from the Green Bay Packers. Number 39, Willard Harrell, fields his punt on his 30-yard line from Mike Bragg. And watch him go. Ain't nobody going to touch him. 70 yards and all, and that put the Cardinals on top, 7 to nothing. The Cardinals got a lot of big plays, especially from Jim Hart. They got a little bit lucky, too. Watch Hart go to the air. He's looking for Mel Gray. Mel tips the ball right into the hands of Eason Ramson to make it 14 nothing Cardinals. Hart wanted to put more points on the board. He's going to the air, and it's intercepted by Gerard Williams. Theisman wasted no time. On a first down play, Theisman finds John McDaniel over Lee Nelson to make the score 14-7, but they were no match for the St. Louis Cardinals as Bud Wilkinson wins his fourth straight game. The New York Jets and the New England Patriots, the Jets needed a very big win today to keep their playoffs hopes alive. They played well, but not good enough to win. Their defense played especially well, as evidenced by this play. Third and seven from their own 25, Grogan back to pass. He is intercepted by number 22, Burgess Owens. His fifth interception of the year. Burgess goes all the way down to the one-yard line where Grogan finally trips him up. Horace Ivory, the great running back for the Patriots, made it 16-10 with this run in the third quarter. But Matt Robinson, who replaced injured Richard Todd, finds Wesley Walker in between Mike Haynes and Timmy Fox for a 56-yard touchdown pass, 17-16. Posey had a chance to kick the field goal for the Patriots to nod it for the Patriots late. He had a chance to win it. We'll be back with more. Or so man can do more. In that Jets-Patriots game, Matt Robinson had to finish up. Richard Todd re-injured his shoulder. He is out for the season, we understand. Philadelphia and the Giants. The Giants lost by the same score the Jets did, only they did it in a much worse fashion. They gave up 13 fourth-quarter points to Philadelphia Eagles, and there it was, 1917, the final there. Buffalo against Tampa Bay. The Buccaneers, this is a lot of points for them. 31 to 10, they did it over the Bills. And as usual, it was their defense that played exceptional load, only 79 yards rushing. Mike Adamley, that defense is an exceptional unit. They the offense uh, played almost as well today as that defense did. Well, they sure did. In particular, quarterback Mike Gray subbing for the injured Doug Williams. He threw two touchdown passes. Ricky Bale had a good first half before leaving with an injured knee. Here he scores from 12 yards out to put the Bucks on top, 7-0. Mike Gray later on goes back to pass, finds Morris Owens working in a one-on-one -on -one situation against Charles Romes. Morris has him beat in the end zone to make it 17-3 in favor of Tampa Bay. And then Ray came back with this touchdown pass, the second of the day, to Jimmy Giles, number 88. Tampa Bay just too much for the Buffalo Bills. 
They are preparing for next year's season. Okay, Mike, uh, also too much for New Orleans Saints Day with Dallas Cowboys. They did a 27-7 over the Saints right there. R Tony Dorsett went over the 1,000-yard mark for the season, and Robert Newhouse fractured a bone in his left leg. Seattle against Kansas City. Well, the Seahawks do it one more time. They reach the 500 mark at 6-6. Six six. Final there at 13-10, and once again, the Chiefs played just good enough to lose by a close margin. And, Mike, uh, what seems to be the Chiefs' problem? They're an extremely young team, as Marv Levy will attest, and they make a lot of mistakes. Today, they coughed up the ball four times, even had a chance to win it before Tony Reed coughed it up. Of course, when you play against Seattle, you got to worry about the arm of Steve Zor or Jim Zorn. Harry hits Steve Largent to set up a touchdown for Seattle. Zorn hands off to David Sims to complete that touchdown play. Sims, with a nice piece of individual work here, reverses his field and scores his 11th touchdown of the season. That's tops in the NFL. That made it 10 to nothing in favor of Seattle. In the fourth quarter, Kansas City trying to get back into the ball game. Mike Livingston hits number 81, Tony Samuels, to set up this touchdown pass to number 22, Ted McKnight. Watch him roll out there. That made it 13 to 10, and I said Tony Reed had a chance to win the ball game. He was going into the end zone as the clock ticked off. He dropped the ball. Seattle won the game. Crazy finish. <laughs> Crazy finish all for Marv Levy, too, I'm afraid. Cleveland and Baltimore. Cleveland a winner in this one, 45-24 over the struggling Colts. Three touchdown passes. Sight to Calvin Hill, 53 yards, 38 yards, and 23 yards. And Calvin Hill, a late season acquisition, comes up looking very, very big for the Cleveland Browns and San Martigliano. The Brownies now go 5-6-6 five and, six and six to keep their very, very slim playoff hopes alive. We'll be back after this word from Spirit. The future is making machines do more so man can do more. Bryant Gumbel along with Mike Adamley. We've been going through the finals of week number 12. Some highlights. We'll try to get you caught up. Atlanta against the Bears. Two teams riding streaks once again. Falcons had won five in a row. Bears had lost eight in a row. Seemed perfect for the Falcons to win, but it didn't turn out that way. The Bears won at 13-7. Walter Payton had a touchdown. Bob Thomas kicked a couple of field goals. Steve Barkowski, a seven-yard pass to Jim Mitchell early in the ballgame, was the only score the Falcons could put on the board. They go 7-5. The Bears go 4-8. Green Bay against Denver. The Packers trying to get up off the carpet after being walked all over by the Dallas Cowboys last week. Today they're going against a very tough defense in the Denver Broncos. It's a defensive struggle right now, and it's 3-0 in the second period. The Packers out in front of a 19-yard field goal by Chester Markle. The Oakland Raiders, who have not been playing exceptionally well, but all they've been doing is winning, are winning today against the Detroit Lions. This one stands at 13-0 in the second period. Mark Van Egan has a couple of short plunges, both of them from one yard out. They have the Raiders out in front. The Lions have been playing very, very well. They stand at 4-7 and seven on the year, but they've won three of their last four. Cincinnati against Pittsburgh. This one seems tailor-made for the Steelers. They're carrying a 9-2 and two record. The Bengals are just 1-10, and, and they're playing at Three Rivers State Stadium where the Bengals have never won. Steelers are out in front 7-3. Chris Barr got the Bengals up with a 29-yard field goal, but Rocky Blyer has gone in from one yard out. And Mike Adamley, I guess if you're a team like Cincinnati coming into Pittsburgh to play and you're 1-10, you've got to feel like the whole world's against you. Yeah, the thing that's surprising is you really have nothing to lose when you're 1-10 and, and playing against a team that you never beat in their home stadium. Why not go crazy? Heck with this being conservative. They weren't conservative right off the bat. They went long with a couple of long passes. We're going to watch one right here. Uh, Kenny Anderson going for Pat McAnally. Ball's on the 46-yard line. And watch this pass. McAnally subbing for the injured Billy Brooks. Gets in between Donnie Shell and Ron Johnson all the way down to the four-yard line. However, Cincinnati couldn't convert. Matt Flar had to settle for a field goal. In the first quarter, third and eight, Bradshaw hits John Stallworth, number 82, to set up this touchdown run by Rocky Blyer from two yards out at seven to three in favor of the Steelers. I just don't think the Cincinnati Bengals are going to do anything to wreck that streak, beating the Pittsburgh Steelers at three rivers. Mike, very quickly, is it a metal thing when you haven't beaten a team that long at that place? <laughs> That's a great understatement. I guess it is. Ah, you'd have to wonder after a while, you know, maybe our, our time is up, maybe we'll roll double sixes or something to beat these guys, but uh, it just hasn't happened yet. It's defying the odds to keep it going, right? At L.A. against San Francisco, these two teams have a habit of pounding up on each other and splitting the season series. The Rams won the first affair. This one stands at 7-7. We understand it's now 14-7 L.A. The Rams out in front in the second period. We'll come back to four right after this word from Spurs. 
say goodbye for week number 12. Before we slip away, though, we'd like to remind you that we'll be with you twice during week number 13, beginning Thanksgiving Day, and we're looking forward to a big day. We'll be here at 12 noon Eastern time with NFL 78. That to be followed by a game between the Broncos and the Lions from Pontiac, Michigan. On our NFL 78 show, we'll take a look at just how the candidates go about winning the Heisman. Sometimes the dominant efforts are not put forth on the field. Then we'll take two days off and come back again. Sunday with a big double header here on NBC. We're looking forward to two AFC Eastern matchups with the Jets going against the Dolphins and the Colts going against the Patriots. We suggest you check your local listings for the game in your area.